Hello, this is Candace. I chose to focus my discussion this week on Deborah Sampson. Deborah Sampson is known as a woman who actually disguised herself as a man in order to contribute her part to the Revolutionary War. Her story can be found in a book entitled The Woman Who Played a Man, Deborah Sampson by Anne Lombard. She tells that Deborah was born in Uxbridge, Massachusetts. She was a servant from the age of five to about 18, but she was determined to become something other than what her fate may have led her to be. Having worked as a weaver and a teacher, at age 22, Deborah decided she wanted to join the military and fight for American independence. More details are given in the American Battlefield Trust. Um, it's a piece entitled Women in the American Revolution. They tell that she fought under her deceased brother's name of Robert Shirtliff in the 4th Massachusetts Regiment. Having been wounded in battle, she allowed the physicians to treat her forehead but not her thigh in fear of her gender being revealed. She managed to slip out of the hospital and remove one of the two bullets from her leg. Her leg never did completely heal due to the one remaining bullet. In 1783, she contracted a fever and her attending physician kept her gender a secret after discovering it. She was honorably discharged in 1783 and afterwards she argued for her service pension. She was uh, one to give lectures about her time in service um, that helped her raise her three children. By the time she passed in 1827, she was collecting a small amount of pension from both the Massachusetts and the federal government. A statue is erected in front of the public library in Sharon, Massachusetts, where she settled after the war and lived until she died. Deborah Sampson is not as commonly known as Betsy Ross or even Abigail Adams, although I argue she should be. Not only were her actions selfless and brave, they broke the rigid parameters that women were expected to remain in during that time. She was a force to be reckoned with and she fought alongside those that society expected her to be submissive to. Even further, Deborah's story was told in her own words. Um, her story can be confirmed over and over again. Documentation of her existence and service can be found in the records of the First Baptist Church in Middlesbrough, uh, resolve of the legislature of Massachusetts in 1792, records of the pension office of the U.S., um, and an act of Congress granting her, her pension to her, and in her obituary. Her story deserves to be told and told often. The question arises, how many other Deborah Sampsons were there? How many other women did the same thing never to be discovered? It is important even today that our young girls and boys know there were women who were capable and willing to risk their safety in the unknown for the sake of freedom. Stories like Deborah Sampson's brings to light that we are all capable, strong, and brave, that heroes come in all shapes and sizes, and during the American Revolution, America's freedom was due to the contributions of men and women. Herman Mann and John Venton wrote in their book, The Female Review, Life of Deborah Sampson, that everyone included in the American Revolution has the potential to help broaden the scope of understanding of everything that occurred. And Deborah Sampson is worthy of attention. They recognized sometimes her story is told in a romantic way, yet it is deserving to be considered significant and given credit.